Okay, peeps, welcome back. <clears throat> so today we're going to be going over our buy, sells, and dividends for the week, so, which basically the week being uh, 6 9 through 6 15. So, with that being said, let's get it. All right, so I'm going to go over the numbers here real quick in terms of, uh, let's see, dividends, buys, profits, and options premiums. Um, and then we'll go into the actual positions. So, for dividends received from Robinhood, we got dividends from QDTE, YMAX, and YMAG. Uh, the purchases that we made on Robinhood is AMC, YMAG, FEPI, QDTE, and TSLP. Um, as you guys can see, we have a $40,000 balance on Robinhood here with roughly about $20,000 in purchasing power. So um, roughly about only two-thirds of the capital that we have available is actually invested currently. So um, in terms of profits that we received, we received $56.54 from FEPI, uh, HUT8, $388.40, YMAX, $9.42, uh, Riot, $76. That was $76 in profit on um, basically the spread between the cost basis of the 200 shares that we had. So that's ten twelve, And the strike price was at ten fifty. So basically about a $0.38 cent difference times 200 shares. You guys can do the math on that. But the shares got called away. Uh, for profit. And then, of course, we got paid the amount of the shares back at the strike price. So QDTE, $81.66 and YMAG, $14.88. So aside from the Riot position, which was options related, all of the rest of these were basically taking profit um, by selling shares to the market for a higher price than we paid for them. So uh, with that being said, let me go ahead and get into the numbers real quick. Um, I will get into the options premium here in a minute, but I first want to get into the uh, dividends. So let's go ahead and get into the dividends here on Robinhood. So let's see, Robinhood. So as you guys can see, $184.07. That's from YMAX. Of course, we have a lot of shares of this, so it's expected that we're going to make quite a bit of money. Uh, QDTE, which you guys can see is still holding strong. I mean, this thing is just a beast. The price appreciation on this thing is pretty dang good. It actually could take profit yet again on uh, Monday if we wanted to. So uh, you can see the recent dividend payment was $16.99. So I forget what the exact dividend distribution amount was. I think it was like $0.21 cents or $0.23 cents or something like that. But it's basically that times whatever the shares is. So next one I'm going to go over here is YMAG. So this is basically the Magnificent 7 version of YMAX. This is only the MAG7 companies. YMAX is all of the YieldMAX ETFs combined into one, which includes a lot more like MicroStrategy, Coinbase, um, and whatever else they have out there, whatever other positions, AI, YY, PayPal, stuff like that. So we got 58 shares here, as you guys can see, and the... Uh, pending dividend is $39.30 total. So that total for this portfolio comes out to $240.36, as you guys can see here. Now I'll go over to M1 Finance. So you can see M1, well, actually, before I do this, um, we've got a trading only. So you guys can see there's no actual transactions here. So nothing's happened there. Now, in terms of dividends over the last week, we didn't really get much. But again, a lot of the, um, like I've said before, around the middle of the month, we really don't get paid that much around the middle of the month. Most of it happens towards the end of the month or the start of the month. So we're kind of slowly trying to fill that gap with things like FEPI, uh, the Curve Invest ETFs, the Yield Max Fund of Funds, and maybe some other stuff. But 23 or uh, sorry, 203 from TLTW. Uh, 23 cents from Beto, uh, $1. forty from WBA. They recently had a dividend cut, which kind of sucks, but is what it is. No big deal. We didn't really have a lot invested anyways. Uh, 3 cents from 3M and 45 cents from HRZN. At some point, we will be coming back to M1 to fatten up our portfolios even more. Um, but as of right now, that's probably not going to happen right away. So uh, then we'll go over the crypto portfolio so you guys can see here. Um Basically, nothing has changed with the uh, Grayscale Trusts. I, I do have to admit the Grayscale Trusts are starting to look much, much more appealing in terms of prices. We may have to start getting in here again pretty soon because Native Crypto and Grayscale Trusts are just looking dirt cheap at this point. And I'm thinking maybe maybe it might be about the, it might be about a good time to start 
getting back in or consider getting back in. So the native crypto portfolio is the same. It's just, it's kind of been beat down over time, as you guys can see. So ever since we hit uh, wherever that most recent local top was, it's kind of been downhill after that. All coins have been bleeding against Bitcoin, which kind of sucks, but is what it is. So this is the nature of crypto. I mean, if you can't handle the volatility, maybe you shouldn't be in crypto. I mean, do expect the coins to go up and down substantially over time. Uh, understanding the markets in crypto, in my opinion, is probably one of the most important things because if you understand how the market cycles work, it will allow you to be more strategic about your approach towards crypto and maximize the opportunity and the profit. So positions are all still the same. Got Filecoin, AIOZ, uh, Render. We did actually add some to these, but they're still incredibly dirt cheap compared to what they used to be. So again, another reason why we're considering flipping from options and dividends back over to crypto. Uh, Dash, Banker, Crypto.com, Horizon, Scale, Ethereum, uh, Engine Coin, which is unbelievably dirt cheap right now. I mean, this thing is twenty-one cents. I don't, I don't even remember the last time it was twenty-one cents. It might have been like June of last year or something like that. It's been a long time since it's been this cheap. And you know, the gap is closing between now and the time that we're supposed to have the parabolic phase of the bull run. The spot Ether ETF still have not had their listings. I assume when they do. Ethereum and all coins are probably going to pop off. We don't know when that's going to be, you know, that is basically been in a blackout zone recently between the SEC saying, okay, we're going to announce that we're going to approve the spot E3 TFs, but no listings have actually happened. So we'll, we'll keep you guys up to date as uh, we come across the news on that. So uh, engine coin, Zcash, Litecoin, as you guys can see here, we have a lot. We also have some Algorand too, but it's not actually on here. So um, and if Bitcoin gets any cheaper, we might actually start piling into some Bitcoin and get those uh, those position trades going that we were talking about before. So you can see not much has changed other than the value of the portfolio. So now if I go over to Webull, not much has happened on Webull. So no dividends this week. Um, but that's the reason why we have our money spread out across options and dividends, because even if we don't make uh, the amount of money that we want to make in the middle of the month from options or from dividends, I should say, because we don't have a lot in dividend paying stocks in the middle of the month. We can still make up for that in options premiums because almost all of the positions that we do options on, we do weekly options on. So positions here are still the same as you guys can see. Now, in terms of what we got paid on M1 Finance, it's $4.14 right here. The profits that we made, which we already went over what those are, $626.90. Again, $56.54 from FEPI, $388.40 from HUD-8, $942 from WiMAX, $76 from Riot, $81.66 from QDTE, and $14.88 from WiMAG. Okay, so uh, looks like last thing I have to go over here with you guys is the options premium. So uh, bear with me on this one. These do get a little bit confusing because options is simple in theory, but complicated in practice. So AMC uh, entry date 611 covered call, expiration date 614, uh, $22 times nine contracts is the premium. It costs $54 to close early. SoFi 610 cover call, exit date 712, 2024. Uh, that's $85. So 17 times or $17 in premium times five contracts. Uh, CLSK 610 cover call, 75 uh, would be the close date. And then it's $22 times two contracts. Riot 610 cover call, 614 was the close date, which we did actually get exercise on. I believe this is, these are actually the contracts. So that's $28 or $14 times two contracts so we got the 28 dollars in premium plus the 76 in profit that's one of the benefits of doing the wheel strategy so hut 8 610 cover call uh entry date close date 614 28 dollars times uh two contracts so 56 dollars. although we did pay 292 dollars to get out of this position so it actually cost us money to get out of the hut 8 trade or out of the hut 8 um sell call is what I mean to say, but we actually made more profit than it cost us to close the contract. So we made $56 in premiums plus the $388.40 in profit, and it cost us $292 to close it. So we were actually net positive on that transaction. Um, Mara 612 covered call, uh, close date on that one was 614 2024 as $44 times one contract. It cost $15 to close early because we thought we were going to get assigned or how I should say have our shares called away and we do not want that right now. 
So AMC 612 Kirby Calls, 621 is the close date. That's $29 times nine contracts. Mara 614 2024 Cash Secured Put, uh, 621 is the close date, and that's $38 times one contract. So if you do all the math added together, basically the premiums minus what it costs to close early, it's $393 in total. So the total for the week comes out to $1,264.40. And again, this is, I mean, this is more than I get paid at my job on a weekly basis. So kind of at an inflection point here where, uh, you know, I'm actually making more than I get paid at my job at this point, but do I walk away? You know, do I quit my job? I mean, I could easily give people the job at at my job, the middle finger if I wanted to, because a lot of them are kind of just those kinds of people. But um, I'm not going to name any names specifically, but it's a very toxic workplace environment. And I'm, I'm not complaining. You know, I'm just simply calling it for what it is. But I could theoretically afford to walk away, you know, just trade full time. And, you know, we kind of do what we do. But um, th- and you guys are probably wondering, like, why why do you show us these portfolios every single week? What is the point? Like, we don't really care or whatever it is that you guys think. Maybe you like it. Maybe you don't. Reason being is because we want to show you what's possible that you can do. Okay. With enough time, enough persistence and enough strategy, this is achievable. Okay. We accomplished this in roughly about 15 months. It didn't take that long. Okay. Um, of course it, it, it requires a deep understanding of, of a lot of different aspects of markets, but at this point we are at an inflection point where the amount of money that we make, even at our lower points, like we're not making like stupid amounts of money every month, right? And we're just back to normal, so to speak. All of those back to normal months are still exceeding what's being made outside of these different sources of income that we have on the side. So, um, you know, now at this point, I have the option to walk away if I wanted to. But, um, you know, uh, something that still needs to be considered is like the Fed funds rate. And is there going to be a recession? Is unemployment going to go up? Is there going to be layoffs? Like, you know, what is, is there going to be a market crash? Like th- those are kinds of questions that uh, we're kind of having to ask ourselves over time, but I'm just showing you guys the stuff every week to show you what is actually possible. What can actually be achieved? Is this a perfect scenario? Perfect portfolios? No. Um, you know, it's, it's not perfect. The forward earnings estimates on this every single month is about $5,500 a month, which is excess of what I get paid. And it's not perfect. It's not. Um, you know, most dividend portfolio investors would argue like, well, you don't have dividend growth stocks. So there, it's not the ideal portfolio. That's true. Um, I think there's an area of change coming in the markets right now to where there's going to be a, a much more abundant amount of high yielding investments than there used to be in the past. And dividend investors that have been investing in dividend growth stocks are not used to seeing that. So, you know, once somebody's in a particular mindset, it's hard for them to change it. But The reality is, is even if dividend growth stocks were too slow for our taste, we could still do options. I mean, options, the way I've been understanding options in terms of covered calls and cash secured puts actually pays more than even these high yield dividend paying stocks do. Believe it or not, that's actually true. So anyways, just want to show you guys what's possible here, what you can do. You know, if you really, if if it's something you really want, a lot of people say that they want things, but they don't really actually go after it. So, you know, I guess the question you got to ask yourself is what kind of person are you? Are you the person that likes to talk a lot and not do things? Or are you the person that doesn't like to talk a lot and likes to get stuff done? You're really about your business. So, um, and I'm not trying to sound all Dr. Phil or anything. That's, that's not the point of this. I just kind of want to lay this out for you guys and give you an explanation as to why we do this every single week. So anyways, this is the buy, sells, and dividends for the week. Hope you all enjoyed this content. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you all later. Peace.